Hey guys. Hello. Good morning from Panama. Yay, we made it to the Pacific side just a couple of days ago after crossing through the Panama Canal. Yeah, we had a great time. It was quite, uh, quite an experience. We did it twice. But now we're here in Panama and we have some time, so we thought we would put together a video of a question we get asked all the time. Uh, basically, how we afford to sail and how we were able to afford this boat. Right, have we won the lottery? Are we rich kids? Do we have a trust fund? And do we work while traveling? And no to all those, no. except the last one we are making these videos. Yeah, this is our work. The videos are our work, right? Yes. Four years ago, we were dating and we took a trip to Tulum, Mexico, and it was amazing. It actually was life-changing. We decided after that trip that this is what we had to do. We had to travel full-time, and yeah. on the flight back, we had a conversation about starting to save to buy a boat and quit our jobs. Basically, I guess we both agreed that we didn't want to just do these one-week, two-week vacations twice a year, yep. and that we wanted to do this full-time. Yep. I owned a construction company for 14 years, and it was... It was, I was working to travel, but it was very difficult to do so. I was so involved with my business and getting away um, was nearly impossible. And you, so, were, you were working while we were away. Yeah, yeah, I could never fully get away. I was always getting emails and having to answer calls and that was frustrating. So we decided to call it quits. Um, and before I, once I graduated college, I went to Europe for about three years and traveled and worked abroad. And I ended up actually moving back to Colorado, working for a high-end travel company. And so travel and seeing the world has kind of always been my thing. It's been my dream and your thing. <laughs> yeah. So now we're doing it full time. And uh, I guess to break it down for how we do it is basically three things. How we came up with the initial money, how we got the money together to buy this boat. The second thing would be how we afford to cruise month to month, how we come up with the money. And then the third thing we'll go over is basically all the numbers will tell you everything that we have um, spent on the boat and, and what we spend monthly. I think would be helpful. Yeah. There's a lot of other sailing channels and couples out there that have done videos with exact numbers, but we just want to give you a general overview of basically yeah. how we afford this lifestyle and how exactly. we got here. Yeah, those videos are really, really impressive and they've done a lot of work and I don't think we could do any better, so we'll just do an overview of how we did it. When we decided that this is our goal, we worked so hard. The first step was to eliminate all debt, um, except for the mortgage on the home. It was that's different. But we stopped buying anything that depreciated. No more motorcycles. No more cars. cars she um, even sold her car, so we were down to. Sold my car. Yeah, she, she uh, took the light rail to work every day. I mean, we worked really hard at eliminating all the credit card debt and uh, things I had like that. A student loan. Got rid of that. Had to have everything clean and clear. Yep. And then we started the process basically of really putting money aside as much as we could. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go. No, that's you. Okay. The first thing is basically how, how did we come up with the money for the boat? And the short answer is um, about 15 years, 10 years ago, I bought a real small home in a really up and coming neighborhood. And when Eric and I started dating, we dove into a really big construction project, a really big addition project on it, where we doubled the, we popped the top is what we call it. We took off the roof, we extended out the back, and we basically doubled the square footage of the home and uh, about tripled the worth. It took about three? Uh, I think it took us together a year and a half to, to kind of finish. complete the whole home. We did everything ourselves, all out of pocket, no, no loans. No loans. Which was amazing. And so then once we decided that this was what our goal was to buy the boat, we were able to do a cash out refi on the home um, after getting it reappraised. 
which allowed us to get the initial lump sum of money to buy the boat. Almost, we got $200,000 out of the refi on the home, and then the rest um, we saved and we got from garage sales. Selling everything. Your jewelry, you were making jewelry and doing shows. I was making shows. jewelry and doing shows and uh, saving money up that way. Basically, anything that we couldn't bring onto the boat, we had to get rid of, and so we sold. Yeah, and we made actually a lot of money from all that, and my my machinery and everything from the business. Sorry, right, we've got tour boats coming in. We might have to pause this and do it somewhere else because this island is starting it's Saturday, and it's people carnival. are starting to roll in. <laughs> it's carnival. I don't know. Hold on. Number two would be is how we afford to cruise on a month-to-month -month basis. Since we don't have jobs, we need to have a bit of an income. And what we did is we didn't sell the house, uh, we rented it out. Since it's in a really nice neighborhood we were, and the market was pretty high, yep. it was easy for us to find renters and yep. they were also paying our part of the mortgage of the home and then we have that additional that we can live on month-to-month. -month. Yep. Basically. We, our mortgage is $3,300 a month. We rented the home for $5,500 a month. So so basically we have $2,200 a month to live off of. Um, now we haven't exactly no. stayed under that budget, no. um, which was expected I think a yeah. little bit, but we have definitely tried really hard to maintain that $2,000 range on a monthly basis. And where we're cruising in isolated islands, that's easy, no problem. But when we're going around Cartagena or any other of these places that we really want to go explore, yeah, we, we end up dipping into savings a little bit. But our average, just so you guys know. It was rough. After a year and a half of cruising, yep. we've come up with around $3,000 a month. That's what, about, about what we spent. Now we've spent $4,000 one month, but then the next month we spent $1,500. So it, average is $3,000 a month is what we're spending. In addition to that, uh, not only did we buy the boat outright using the cash out refi uh, of the home, but we also saved a lot of money to put aside in case of emergencies yep. or in case of any parts or anything that needed to be replaced on the boat because that's not cheap. No. So we have had a savings set aside for those reasons and which we've kind of and we're dipping into dipped them. into now recently. But this is kind of why we are making these videos. Yeah, we're working really hard we're to make nice really videos. We're working really hard to do that and get some patrons who help uh, kind of continue our motivation to making these videos for you. Big shout out to any Patreon. Thank you guys <laughs> yes. very much for helping this Thank you guys. continue. And then lastly, I guess we'll just share with you guys our actual numbers. Um, what we, we spent we, on We what? said we weren't doing actual numbers. Roughly. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what we spend yeah, and what, what we, we spent on, on the boat. boat actually. Yeah. So there's... Yeah. Um, she's a 2014 Fontaine Pajot Lapari. They usually range somewhere between 250000 and maybe 350000 um, for the highest end. And this boat was in great shape and it was worth towards the upper end. And we ended up paying uh, $310,000 for this boat. We um, refied and got $200,000 out and we saved about another $150,000 um, and combined that was what we spent on the boat and we have a little bit extra to live off of. And, yeah, it yeah. certainly helped that we found, yeah, we found a newer boat so there's not a lot of major maintenance needing to be done. Yeah. A lot of people who are thinking about going and cruising and, and doing this um, typically go for those older boats but that would mean you might initially pay a lower a lower amount, but in the long run you end up spending more because there's a lot more to maintain and upkeep and the parts and all that. So, yeah, all the systems have aged and they're yeah. going to use have more maintenance than a boat this age would. Um, so it's a toss up, and it's what what you can afford. It's what you can afford yeah. in the long run. Initially, yeah. um, it might be a lot, but in the long run, if you can maintain this enough, you can do this for a long time. And the previous owners. One previous owner to this boat, they just took the most amazing care of it, and, and we it came with so many yeah. extras too. We had solar, water maker, um, all sorts of extras were already outfitted on the boat that yep. we were hoping that it would come with. And now we just keep improving her even more than before. But Devin Campbell, the previous owners, thank just, you guys so much. We love her. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Yeah. Well. That's it. If I you guys have any questions, ask us. We're an open book and we love Absolutely. to share how we are living this beautiful life and traveling the world by boat.
We hope this video helped you guys a little bit, if not just inspire, but maybe give you some ideas of what you might need to spend. And I promise you it could be a lot, lot less if you went with a monohull or an older boat. Um, it just depends, everybody's budget's different. We just wanted to share with you guys what we've done, what we spent, and how we did it. Okay, hopefully it helped. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much for Thank watching. You. Okay.